Programming on 90.7 WKGC and the Commodore Sports Network is sponsored by Sweet Bay. Sweet Bay is a bayfront village in Panama City that features parks, walking trails to the water, a future town center, and more. A community connected at the water's edge, Sweet Bay. More information about Sweet Bay online at sweetbayfl.com or 844-35-SWEET. Welcome, Commodore fans, to Coach's Corner, a production of Gulf Coast State College's digital media program here. I want to thank the folks over at Sweet Bay for being title sponsor of Coach's Corner. Their financial contributions help bring you these games and, and this show. So, got Coach Phil Gaffney here today. We're going to talk about the Commodores, 14-8 and eight overall coach, 3-3 three and three in the panel conference, and ranked number eight in the state coaches poll. And we haven't had a Coach's Corner since we started the conference race, so we got a whole pile of conference games to talk about today. That's excellent. So, so, but what, first let's talk a little bit, three and three in the panel conference. What's your thoughts on that, Coach? Yeah, we, you know, we blew a game at Tallahassee where we, were, we lost by two in a game we should have won up double digits a half, and we just we screwed it up. So uh, if we had been four and two right now, I'd feel really, really good. Uh, three and three, I don't feel so good. So, uh, so that's Commodore fans, we're going to start with last Saturday – and walk backwards in the season, uh, mainly because I'm old and <laughs> this will help me to do the games we've done last That's right. first. That's and, right. And then we'll run out of time because there's no way probably to talk about six games and then what's coming up. So uh, so Saturday, Commodores defeated Pensacola State College 67-63. Uh, at half, it was 34-27. The second half, Coach, they outscored us 32-25, but the Commodores did hang on uh, to pick up a panel conference win. Yeah, it, it was a great win in that we played terrible. We didn't have our A game. Uh, we were just awful. And with 43 seconds to go, we were down seven. And generally, when you're down seven at the end of a game, you're not going to win. And uh, we did a, enough defensively where we turned them over a bunch of times in a row. And not only did we come back and tie, but with three seconds, we actually had a chance to win the game. And, and uh, uh, Chase Forte had a great look at a three. Uh, didn't go in and then we went overtime and we, we held them down in the overtime so ended up winning by four so really good defense down the stretch and uh, just not a good offensive game for us just awful but you know we we had enough defense to fight it out and that's a great thing you know to, to be down seven with 43 seconds and come back and win you just gotta be real happy well gotta be happy about that the, the guys didn't pack it in i don't say overtime a lot because the two people that help me broadcast do not like the word overtime i bet and i and i talked to them i don't like overtime unless that gets us to another opportunity to have a chance to win and down by seven even the other two at the table was going okay if we can just get into <laughs> overtime i bet they were then, then in this case we can pick up a win so outscored them in the overtime period eight to four win by four as coach said um Scoring-wise, Pierre-Louis with 11, way off of his mark. Watson with 15. Uh, German, I'm going to talk a little bit about him, 8 points with 12 rebounds. And he played really good defense. He was really solid defensively. So he makes up for everybody else's mistakes. So the rebounds were great, and then uh, you know making up for everybody else was great too. So in this case, if we look at the game by from us, there's no stats from Pensacola in, so we can't talk about about any of that, but free throw attempts 61, 61.5%. Uh, uh, three point percentage was 36%, and from the floor 39.1. Um, I don't know what they shot from the free throw line, but I think they probably shot better than us, which breaks what normally happens. A it does. Game goes to the best free throw shooting. Team. It does, but we're fortunate that 60% for us, we've been horrible the last few games. So <laughs> 60 is actually an improvement where everybody else is that's horrible. You know, 39%, you know, you can't be in the 30s and win games. It was, it was atrocious, but, but we did enough to win because we defended. Our, our, certainly our offense stinks right now. So, so did that. And, you know, Pensacola likes to set in those zone defense. They run a lot of zones too. So trying to adjust to that um, and shoot from the floor um, 
that affected us. It did, but they actually play a lot of man-to-man -to -man too. Mm -hmm. And we were uh, equally as bad, if not worse, against the man-to-man. -man. We just had a lot of problems shooting the basketball. A couple of our really good shooters, one was one for five, one was one for six um, from three. Just, just not good basketball. So, and then we traveled back to January 19th, which was last Wednesday. Uh, traveled over to Northwest Florida State College. Now, number one ranked team in the state and the country. Um, sitting on, a, at that time, a perfect record. And we come up short, 91-69, 44-31 the first half, 47-38. Um, but the, the sc final score doesn't paint a picture of what really happened. You were still ahead early at the beginning of the fourth quarter, and then they came back and just blew the game open. For yeah, them. with seven minutes to go, they called timeout, and it was a, it was a close game, and we had fought back, and uh, it was a great game. And then the last seven minutes, it was all them. They just uh, they just blew us out the gym, and give them credit. They really play great at home. They shoot it. You know, they're the number two team in the country. There's a reason for that. They haven't lost at home this year. There's a reason for that. They haven't really had a close game at home this year. And, and it's because they take care of business at home. They're just a very, very good basketball team. And, you know, we were up on them here at halftime. And second half, we just just didn't have it. And then and same thing. They just, just the biggest discrepancy, I think we got out rebounded by about 20 something rebounds. And, you know, we have a Tay Hall is still out. He's our leading rebounder. He hasn't played in January. He's still out with an injury. Um, we're hoping we get him back. But without him, uh, the Chipola game and, and the in the Northwest, we were out rebounded by twenty something both games. So if you're out out rebounded by twenty some odd, you know the, they get the ball twenty more times That's than true. you. It's going to be kind of hard to to compete with somebody. And to, honestly, up until the last seven minutes, uh, it, it was a great head to head battle, and the, uh, we really didn't really shoot the ball well. But Pierre Louis shot it, and so we just kind of rode Pierre Louis. And then we just couldn't stay with them the last seven minutes of the game, and, and they pulled away to a solid win. Yeah, in that case, they, they had 45 rebounds. We had 22. That's just and, embarrassing. And, and in that case there, um, you know, and if we look at turnover-wise, 14, we, we turned the ball over 11 times, which uh, every coach, we can live with that. They turned it over 14 times, so it was a pretty yeah, clean game. The 11 is much better than we have been. Yeah, That's true. been one of our problems is the free throw shooting and the in and the and the turnovers and we're we're doing better on the turnovers but then we go in two straight games and getting destroyed on the glass so that's got to get better so now since you keep bringing up free throw shooting we were two of eight for 25 percent uh embarrassing that we only went eight times when the strategy was we're going to live in the lane and we didn't live in the lane and you got to give northwest credit for that and then shooting two for eight is just you know it's kind of like maybe what a sixth grade or fifth grade team might shoot oh. um and i really expect them to shoot better than that uh so just embarrassing just a bad day and if we talk about free throw shooting they were eight or 26 from line so they had 26 attempts to our eight so uh you could look at that because a lot of our fouls were going to the rack too because both teams trying to get there trying to draw the foul they were just more successful. A lot more successful <laughs> at doing it. They, they, were, they did a great job. So, and then if we look at um, shooting from behind the arc, 9 or 27, 33%. Uh, from the floor, 29 of 61 for 47 and a half percent. Not bad shooting. They were 18 of 26 from, from the free throw line, 69.2. 7 of 18 for 38.9 behind the arc and 33 of 61. 54% from the floor, so. Uh, yeah, far too good. They shot far too well. We shot well. They shot great. Right. Pierre-Louis with 22 that night. Watson with 10. Forte with 16. And Captain Gelly coming off the bench with 11. So, bad. and like like we talked about, we were right there till into the fourth quarter, and then it just switched. And... You know, our guys are a little banged up in your bench, not completely full yet because you got people that like Tay Hall not back, and and then they're playing through injuries. You know, we're playing. We played four games in eight days, yes. and, and just just a tough, tough thing. Now we'll back up to January seventeenth, which was last Monday. Chipola Indians come. Chipola and Gulf Coast been a rivalry forever. Um, probably our biggest rivalry in. In the conference, 
and it's been that way forever. And the Commodores won 79-74. Uh, first half, 34-33. Second half, 45-41. So Commodores outscored them both halves, Coach. We did, and, 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 and uh, uh, again, defensively, the, the rebounds, we got destroyed on the glass. Uh, I think we got a rebound by 20-some-odd again, uh, which is awful. But um, if you look at, we shot the ball well. We did enough defensively and taking care of the ball um, to, to, to keep us in the game and shoot a high percentage and hold them down a little bit, and that, that was the difference. Uh, um, and again, ninth-ranked team in the country. You, you would love to beat... You know, we've played a million games this year. We've had the third hardest schedule in the country. Uh, we, we play a zillion nationally ranked teams. So playing Northwest and playing Chipola is just like all the other people we play. So it's not anything new. So the fact that we beat number nine in the country, you know, we beat three rank, nationally ranked teams in one in three straight days earlier this year. Right. So for us, that's that's nothing new. But we love to beat a great team. Coach Tyndall's a great coach, and Chipola is obviously one of the top teams in the country. So, um, and if we – Look at rebounding like you talked about, 51 to 24. It's just embarrassing. And, and I don't so, know how, any other way to say it. So, and, how are we even in the game? <laughs> so, but in there, if you look at it, um, 14 of 28 from the free throw line. Awful. 50%. 9 of 28 from behind the arc. That's 32.1. 28 of 58 from the floor for 48.3. Not bad. Not bad. So and in their case, they were 10 or 12 from the free throw line. That's kind of how they stayed close is, um, from the line. 83.3, 4 of 18 from behind the arc. That's not good. And, that's, that was, and a lot of that, we did a pretty good job, I thought, of getting out and running but people off the line. You, you made a move change. It couldn't get comfortable there. And, and every, most every shot was contested. And so we did a, a great job there. Uh, 30 of 75 from the floor. For forty percent uh, shooting for yep. them, so. that's a better better job defensively. <laughs> so, and then we'll back back up till January fifteenth. We went over to Tallahassee and lost sixty seven sixty five. First half though, it was forty one thirty three at halftime. Yeah, that's that's, and we even extended that, and, that, yeah. and that's the part that that bothered me is that all road games in college are extremely tough to win. Um, but that was a game we should have won, and, and we just did not play well the last three minutes of the game. And then even at the end of the game, we had a wide open, great, I won't say wide open, a great look at a three by Pierre-Louis, our best shooter, and he's a money guy. And then, um, and then uh, good news, got fouled, and he had a chance to make his free throws, and of course he missed. And then we had a chance at an alley-oop at the buzzer uh, because the ball went out of bounds, and we executed the, the missed and we just missed that as well. So we had three bites at the apple. You know, you got to get one of them bites has got to you got to come through with, and we didn't come through. So again, losing by two to Tallahassee. Tallahassee is it's not a bad loss in any stretch of the imagination. But we that was a game we had in hand, and again, shot free throws poorly, and just just didn't didn't play well enough to win. Right down the stretch in that critical last few minutes of the game. Yes. From some shots and some attempts and some things. Turnovers, turnovers, free throws. And when it hurts you, because now a two-point game is, is really you can look at any one possession and say, yes. look what this cost, what it cost yes. us. And those are those are hard. So now, since we're about out of time, we'll look at the panel conference standing. Chipola knocked off Northwest Florida. They Saturday. did. Uh, so Northwest five and one. Chipola's four and two. Gulf Coast three and three. Uh, Tallahassee Community College. Uh, two and three, and Pensacola State 0 oh and five, and you know Pensacola's not going to want to go unbeaten or or lose every game in the panel conference. So there, somebody's going to have to watch out there too. No question. Hey, they had Tallahassee beat, and they were up one with four seconds to go, and Tallahassee took the ball out of bounds, and they hit a shot to win by mm -hmm. one, and then they had us down seven with 43 seconds to go, and we beat them. No. So they're, they're waiting right there. They're on the cusp. They just haven't been able to finish it. So, so on any given night, somebody can pick up a win. Uh, we have Tallahassee coming this Saturday to Bill Harrison Fieldhouse. So here's a chance to see, okay, did we improve? Can we win at home? Must win for us. So, Must win. So, so come out and watch the Commodores play um, at 4 o'clock on yes. Saturday in the Bill two Harrison. Two and four. So the women will play at 2. And we'll be right back to bring you the
Coach Roy Kuhn, and I'll talk about how the Lady Commodores are doing on the Commodore Sports Network. Programming on 90.7 WKGC and the Commodore Sports Network is sponsored by Sweet Bay. Sweet Bay is a bayfront village in Panama City that features parks, walking trails to the water, a future town center, and more. A community connected at the water's edge, Sweet Bay. More information about Sweet Bay online at sweetbayfl.com or 844-35-SWEET. Welcome back, Commodore fans. Coach Rory Kuhn and I will talk about Lady Commodores. We haven't had a coach's corner since the conference started. So, But right now, Lady Commodores 14-7 and seven overall, 3-3 three and three in the panel conference, and ranked number four in the state coaches poll. So before we jump into games, your thoughts on being three and three at this halfway through the conference, Coach? Well, with uh, with COVID injuries and everything else, I'll take three and three. So, so in that case, you know, COVID played four games in eight days. Mm -hmm. I don't think you've had a healthy, complete bench. Maybe the day you started, but you didn't have yeah. a complete bench then because you had some that couldn't even play then. Right. Yeah. So, we, can you imagine what it'd be like to have a healthy? complete bench I, I know I mean shoot uh, you know you miss an Anaya Boyd for the Pensacola game the game before you're missing Keontae who starts and averages 12 a game and your backup point guard that could have spelled and give us some minutes you know Taylor couldn't play um, you know so you're just dealing with injuries and COVID and you know it's just it's you take it as it comes and you just got to try and get by so yeah it would be nice to ac actually eventually have a full healthy team you know but hey We'll get there at some yep, point. So, hopefully. so in that case, you get, and like we talked about before the show, in July, we weren't sure we were going to have any team. Yeah. Right. So, so at this stage, we are. We're right in the middle of the mix. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, this past Saturday, we defeated um, Pensacola here, handed them their first loss at the time, 72-62. Yeah. Uh, uh, we were tied after the fir at first quarter. Both teams scored. 11. We scored 24 to their 16 the second. Yeah. They come back in the third, got us 19-18. In the fourth quarter, we got them 19-16 to uh, knock off them. And like I said, at that time, they were perfect in the panel conference. Yeah, they were uh, they were perfect in the conference, and they were nine in the country. So, uh, I mean, doing that with Keontae, like I said, hurt in Northwest games, still having – uh, basically one foot with an ankle injury. She gutted it out and played, and, you know, Anaya didn't play. So to be able to win with Keontae having one foot and Anaya not playing at all, who started most of the games this year, um, you know, that's a good sign for us. Yep. I mean, you know, Morgan was great. You know, I think she finished with 26 that game. 26. She, she really, uh, you know, took over there at the end. But, you know, we got other people stepping up, which is what I've been talking about. Namani had 15 and, and seven rebounds, and then Lucia – was great on the glass so I mean it was a total team effort and if you look at that we'll jump back to Boyd for a little bit yeah. she had nine rebounds and she just gets hers and she was 12 or 14 from the free throw line yeah uh, right. which is huge um, for us and then Smith you brought up with seven rebounds yeah I think coach she has improved every game she's getting better and better yeah you know it was funny her uh, her mom was at the game and I told her I said hey She's kind of growing up right before our eyes here. You know, she's so. getting better and better and more confident. And, you know, and that's what, you know, when someone like an eye is out, somebody else has to step up in that game. It was her. And she's been getting better and better and more confident and, you know, growing every day. So, you know, I don't, that only helps us as a team altogether. And so uh, so she's finding her, her place there. Yeah. Downs is, is getting better and improving also yeah. for you. Yeah, she's coming along, so. you know. And if we look at that game, um, Pensacola turned it over 13 times. We turned it over 15 times, pretty close yeah. to each other. Um, if we go back and look at um, the game from a shooting perspective, uh, we were 25-33 from the free throw line for 75.8. While ago, Coach Gaffney and I was talking about he had some 25 percenters in there. So 75 oh. percent, he would love yeah, to be yeah. there. Um, we'll take that. Three of 13 from behind the three-point arc now yeah. for – 23.1, 22 of 58 from the floor for 37.9. Uh, Pirates, 17 of 30 uh, for 56.7 from the free throw line. 5 of 18 for 27.8 from behind the arc and 20 of 61, uh, 32.8. Plus another nice thing you did, uh, Portia only had 11 points. Right. And normally she scores yeah. way more than that. 
Chamberless was the only other player they had in double figures. So you d y'all did a nice job of containing him. Yeah, I believe Porsche, I think she was three for 10 for the game. Yeah, so. And, you know, the first time we played him again, back to injury, so. Musha didn't play. So, so this time Musha was able to play and yeah. her length bothered her so. a little bit. And, you know, that was their first time seeing her and what she can do. So, th so that helped us. So, and like you saw about uh, Musha with 13 rebounds. Yeah. Th those are big. 13 boards. So, I mean. so, so in that case, uh, if we look at rebounding wise, we actually out rebounded them 40 37. Yeah. And, so, and they're one of the better rebounding teams, teams in the country. country. So. so, so that's how that one turned out. Then we went over to Northwest Florida um, to play them um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in the arena. Um, and first quarter, we outscored them 17 13. Second quarter, we outscored them 17 16. Uh, fourth quarter, they outscored us 15-14. Uh, the fourth quarter, they got us 25-15. But a little bit yeah. between there, at the end of that third quarter, you you have two players, um, Boyd and Robinson, I wasn't sure was going to even be able to start because they got banged up a little bit in yeah. there. And, and that became a physical game. Uh, and we came up short 69-63, uh, but we were right there with that. Yeah, I mean, it was – to me, it was one of those games where, um, you know, not having Keontae and then not even having Taylor um, that could spell and give some minutes to Morgan so, and for Anaya to rest because they were just, they were gassed. And I was worried about them having to play so many minutes. Yes. And that was the game, unfortunately. You know, she went battling out through the end, but Anaya, you know, tweaked her knee a little bit. That's why she didn't play against Pensacola. So all those minutes did wind up catching up there and taking a toll, um, you know, and, and, you know, Morgan just had to play through it. And, you know, again, she had 26 points, 26, points. 26 there, 26 against Pensacola, back to back 26 point games. I mean, so she's just been growing up and, you know, putting the team on her back. But yeah, not having Taylor and Keontae really hurt, um, you know, just as far as just being able to rest. Yep. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, it's one of those games. I don't feel that, uh, you know, that we got outplayed. Uh, I just feel like, you know, a, you know, we just ran out of gas there at the end. Yep. Um, so I, I told him that's as proud as I can be taking the number one team on the road yep. to a six point game, being down a starter and down your backup yep. point guard. So, I mean, it, it was positive. We, we grew on it, obviously yep. and we beat Pensacola. So, I mean, you know, they, they didn't hang their heads. They just got out there and did what they had to do next. So. And they kept getting better and better. Yeah. And as we might possibly talk about yeah. four games here, um, they um, they got they're getting better and better every yeah. game. So, and in that case, number one ranked team in the state and the country, yeah. unbeaten at that time. Unbeaten. So, um, yeah. Uh, but we we won that game. <laughs> I wish we won that yeah, game. Yeah, me but, too. But we were right there. We were, we right, were right there, there with them, yeah. and you know, um, maybe it'll set up the same way it did last year. We took our lumps. Yeah. And got in the state tournament, then knocked him off in the state tournament. That's it. There you go, Coach. That's just I, I, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how easy it can yeah. be, Coach. That's it. Now, oh, uh, January 17th, uh, Chipola came to town. They've been our rivalry since these two schools yeah. were built. Um, uh, so they've always been that. And the Commodores defeated him 76-67. Uh, some interesting things in this game. Uh First quarter, 21-19. Second quarter, 12-5. to five. Mm -hmm. Third quarter, 21-20. to 20. They got us in the fourth quarter, 23-22. But we came up uh, with a victory uh, against another nationally ranked team. Yeah, they, they came in at 16, and, uh, you know, we, we took care of business that night. I mean, I don't remember what Morgan finished with uh, that game. Uh, she finished with 12, but you had, 12. You had Smith at 11, Mm -hmm. uh, Robertson with 12, Boyd with 24. Yeah, that's the game and I stepped up big and, and had 24. And Downs had 10. So yeah. four of your five starters in the double figures. Yeah. And then the other big thing I remember specifically about that game was, again, Musha with the rebound. So, I think she had 15 boards that game. And we, we out-rebounded them as a team. So I think that's the first time that had happened to them as well. Um, so it's kind of been a recipe for success here. If we, we can out-rebound other teams, yeah. we're usually in a good spot. Um, but, you yeah, know, that was a great game, and uh, I didn't realize how happy uh, everybody was here. Uh, oh, you that saw we that? Beat Chipola, yeah. Oh, that? Yeah. Both men and women both won that uh, night. We I were know. celebrating. That's not 
we were all thinking that, that doesn't happen a lot. Yeah, it doesn't happen and, often. In this case, you talked about rebounding. Uh, we had 49 rebounds to their 24. Yeah. Now, that was a, a great night on the boards yeah. uh, doing the things um, we were supposed to do there. Chipola 12 of 25 from the free throw line at 48%. Yeah. Uh, 7 of 27 for 25% behind the arc. 24 of 70 for 34.3%. That shows Lady Commodores applied some pressure. Yeah, no, uh, we did. So you did know, a nice job. Did a good of, job in that. And doing that because if we go up and look at there, they only had two players in double figures. Yeah. Uh, McLaughlin's going to get her points, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then Brian had to come off the bench yeah. for 13. But other than that, nobody else hurt us. Yeah, we kept everybody else pretty much in check. And like I said, when, when we rebound like that and just give them one shot, one and done, yeah. you know. And then... Now, here, here is one interesting fact that we'll talk before we move on to the next game. We turn it over 25 times to their 15. Yeah. Now, their pressure is intense, and they, they keep it up the whole game and throw fresh bodies at you. And, uh, you know, now that I've, I've tried to explain it to them, but you know, obviously it's one different thing being explained and another going out there and doing it. So now that they've been through it, hopefully we can handle the pressure better next time and, you know, make our adjustments that we need to make. And in that case, you know, because – all these kids that hasn't played in a panel conference, trying to describe what playing in a panel conference is like, you can't. Yeah. Now, your pre-conference game uh, season, best in the country, because you yeah. played as many hard nationally ranked teams as you can yeah. to help prepare them for that. So, But let's see if we can get one more in here. Yeah. Uh, we went to Tallahassee, and we won 72-60. Uh, um, I can't break it down by the things because they only put – second quarter yeah. and fourth quarter in for yeah. their scoring. So, but, you know, uh, come up with a, with a good win there uh, because anytime you can win in the panel conference, just like the Pensacola men hasn't won a game, no. but they're going to get one. They're going to get one. And, yeah. the, and the Tallahassee women's going to get one. Yeah. We just hope it's that's not, not us. against yeah. us. You can't fall asleep. You and can't so, let the records fool you. Uh, you know? So in this case, uh, a good solid win there. Smith with 10, Robertson with 19, Downs with 20. Yeah. Big score for yeah. you that night. So that's been moving around a little bit. It moves around, and that's kind of the way I like it, you know. When, when it moves around, it means different people are stepping up every night, and, you know, that's what a team does, different each time, you know. And as long as Morgan can be a bit of an anchor, you know, Boom. I think it's a good recipe Boom. for success. Now that way, they can't key. If they key on somebody, then right. somebody else is going to be yeah. open. And, exactly. and, and like you said, that that's helping. Now, halfway through the conference, if we look at the conference standings right quick, Northwest Florida lost to Chipola Saturday yeah. night. Uh, so they picked up their first loss. Uh, they're four and one. Pensacola State three and one. Uh, Chipola College three and three. Gulf Coast three and three. And Tallahassee Community College 0 oh and five. So now the second half of the conference race gets to be really important. It sure does. <laughs> <You know. laughs> and every season it comes down to yeah. the last game, yeah. you know. It, uh, uh, and some it, it conferences will already it'll yeah. already be decided, but in our yeah. conference, no. Yeah. No, oh. I mean, it's going to be a log jam there in the middle, you know, uh, between us, Pensacola, Chipola, and, and who knows even what's going to happen, you know, with Northwest. I mean, if they if they get back to their winning ways, you know, you'd think they would stay at the top. But, you know, between us, Pensacola and Chipola, you, you just don't know what's going to happen. That's why I just keep telling telling the girls, listen, it's just one game at a time. Control what we can control. Um and that's our, you know, our mindset and our mentality of one game, one step at a time, and just, you know, get better each day. Now, one thing, if you look on the national site, it says we play Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern time, which is 3. Mm -hmm. Coach Gaffney said we're playing at 2 and 4. So I don't want to tell the folks to come down mm -hmm. and half the game is over with or not, but, you yeah. know, I'm assuming we play at 2 and 4. I would assume, but you know what? Let me check on that and get back to the people so, so we know. We, so, so in this case, that up. Uh, be there at 2 o'clock. Yeah, show up early. And then you know, you, yeah. if the you're there case. early? Yeah. Hey, we did that when we went to Tallahassee. It worked out well yeah, for worked us. Out. So. We're, we're so. fine. Get yeah. a hot dog, have some popcorn. You know, so. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So for Coach Rudy Kuhn, I'm James Baxley. We'll see you next time on the Commodore Sports Network.